Welcome to Mint Customs. A year ago, the old man fell in love with a fuel tank. Other people's houses. Yeah, I'm a bit funny about other people's houses. I'm oh, well funny about that. People bring around like, oh, I've done a lovely spag bog or a nice gulag or whatever. That's how like that. He liked it so much, he designed a whole motorcycle around it. <laughs> a lot has changed over the last year, but just about the only thing that hasn't changed is the state of this Honda TT racer. It's been sat in the corner of the workshop gathering dust. The old man has started and finished quite a number of motorcycles in the time this TT race has sat feeling sorry for itself. Have we got a bucket and a bit of string? Fast forward a whole year and let's get an update and see what's going on with this motorcycle. Front eggs back from Craig's. The tide is out, is it? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean the tide to be out. Oh. Right, what do you want to know, Sam? Well, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a while. Welcome back to Mint Customs, the series. This is the story of the Honda TT racer. I found the frame on an auction site, a well-known one. It turned out to be a little bit more special than, than I thought it was, because the swing arm was braced, at the bottom brace on the swing arm. There was some gusset in added to the frame itself. Yeah, finish your biscuit, Dad. I did a little research. Come on, we're all waiting to hear what you've got to say. And it turns out it was built by another company. Dad, you're right, mate. Don't know where I was saying it was. <laughs> can hear the gears going round in his head. We think I think it was Saxon Saxon Engineering. Saxon Engineering, I think. But it was cool frame, um, so I cut it in half. <laughs> it was all the fact that we had this really, really cool tank and it was on the shelf for like years and was, I was like, I've got to build something out of that tank. It was all a complete bit of stuff that we had laying about in the workshop. We have quite a lot of history with building Hondas, going way back over 15 years ago we used to build Honda CB500s and Honda Hornets and go out and win races. And a lot more recently building a nifty little Honda CM125. <laughs> it's alright isn't it? <laughs> it's alright as Hot Rod Tom would say. Bye. Literally that has been born out of we had in the workshop wheels, the forks were some old Hornet race forks stuff. I've got an old master cylinder, I've got this, that, this, that, and the other. I had to buy a few new sort of new things all the wheel bearings, head race bearings, and ancillary stuff when we do a build anyway. Um, that's all new, but literally built out of nothing. One man ish is another man's treasure. This Honda's coming together nicely. And then there's some special things that you've made, like the airbox and the intake system. Plus. Yeah, well, I mean, that prior to that was the fact that we managed to squeeze or cut and shut this CBR 600 engine into a CB750 frame. I couldn't get an airbox on, yet alone get the carbs on, so I had to change all the inlet rubbers, get some 600 Hornet carbs, which gave us a little bit more of a, a flat angle to come out. They've got to run on airbox these things. You can't run pod filters on these carbs. They just don't want to run. So I had to get my head around how I was going to build an airbox, a bespoke airbox. 
there's a lot of other fields going on. So Loads of other stuff going on, but until the phone call from Bike Shed saying, you know, we put the bike in this year, so it was the, the only thing that we had sort of shed worthy was this thing, and it is it's it's good because it was built out of stuff in your shed, <laughs> stuff that <laughs> stuff that I had in my shed. Hot, hot Rod Tom walked in and I said I need some silicon hose or some elbows and he said well I've got some exhaust tubes, stainless exhaust tubes so it'll probably be that that bore so it was like go get them and then Tom dragged his swaging machine out and we swaged it all up and, and he's actually built a, a filter into the bottom of the airbox as well and then how long have we got? Well, I'm, I'm panicking now. I haven't got any wheels. My wheels went off the powder coat, and there was a problem with the blasting. And it was only this morning I got the forks and the yokes back from powder coat. So I've managed to get that that built up, but I'm I'm panicking now. I know I've got weeks. You say I've got four, five, five weeks till the show, but that's that's nothing in bike building terms. That's nothing. I shouldn't have to do this. Why have I got to do this? That's what I got you for? And in the meantime, while that was a way to paint and powder coat, I started building another Harley. Just saying. <laughs> Where's Sam? Hey, mate. What? Yeah. This Honda CB750 dash, CBR600 dash, 600 Hornet. Oh. Let's just call it the Honda TT Racer, as the whole style and inspiration of this bike comes from the Honda and Yamaha TT Racers and Grand Prix bikes from back in the day. This Honda will have some really cool high-end performance parts. I think it will do quite well as a track day weapon, or it could even be entered into a lot of wacky club racing classes, and it will definitely turn heads as a road bike. Yes, this bike will be road legal. Get it We have a week until the Bike Shed show. The TT Racer is top priority. The frame is now the classic Mint Customs white. We have Marazocchi twin shocks in the rear, Marazocchi front fork internals, huge Brembo brakes with Superbike discs. I've been slummed with the wiring. Mm. You volunteered? Oh, uh, you, I did. Don't fall for that. <laughs> we have left the CBR600 engine standard. It will need some dyno work and setting up, but after the show. All we're waiting on now is the satin red and black paint job and graphics kit, which apparently is on the way. It's alive! I guess the big question is, will it fit in at the Bike Shed Bike Show? This show is an international bike show. It's a big deal. Probably our biggest show and biggest event we're gonna do for the whole of this year. And that sort of hit home when we were unloading the bike and there were vans there from Italy, the people have flown in from China, from India. Um, we met some cool people from India, a bike builder over there, and some YouTube YouTubers. This is the tenth edition of the Bike Shed Show at the Tobacco Docks in London. So I was, a, I had a mild panic about the fact that what we'd built wasn't actually good enough for the Bike Shed Show because we'd built it out of scrap that we had um, in the workshop. Basically an old CBR600 engine and a couple of wheels and, and an old CB750 frame that was hanging up. But I, I don't think 
I don't think we shamed ourselves at all because watching Sam push the bike through all the other bikes to get to the bit where, where, where we were put, um, actually looking at our bike compared to the other stuff in there, I, I, it, it looked amazing. And um, we, did really well, so we did do really well, considering what it was built from and the, the cost to build it. <laughs> well, everybody expected a Harley, and we, we rolled in with a three-quarter Honda half Yamaha thing. Like, oh, I thought, I thought it would be a Harley, I thought it would be a Harley. And the bike, bike shed crew and the bike shed show, anyway, all the bike shed crew, Vicky and... Dutch and Ross, they're, they're, they're amazing, absolutely amazing. And the, what they do over that weekend, they didn't stop. I mean, I'm thanking them, I'm thanking them for being amazing people and putting on an amazing show. Yes. We've got to ride it. We've got to ride it. Why do I always have to ride these? Why can't somebody else ride it? <laughs> so after the bike show, we got the Honda back to the workshop, put a fuel supply to it, and ran the engine for the very first time. We knew from the start it was going to take a lot of fine tuning and dyno work to get this bike set up and running sweet. The old man got it fairly well set up and decided to take the bike for a very small road test. We weren't planning on filming this, he didn't even take his mobile phone with him. But little did we know, a very small but life-changing event was about to happen. Dad rode past holding his hand up in the air. I thought he was waving at me. Skin, skin. Yeah. Yeah. Right, let's go then. What, what hospital? Lister? There's no way in here, Lister, is there? Oh, pulsing now. Let's go. Yeah, he's got to keep pressure on it. Who, who's, who's going? Huh? You and Poshka, I'll look after the shop. Take the keys and top of my toolbox. Go in, go in the transit. Dad lost half of his middle finger and fractured his index finger. Reaching down, to not take his eyes off the road and to adjust the carburetors and airbox. And he put his finger into the chain. Turns out taking your eyes off the road for a moment may have been a better idea, Dad. And for a bass player to lose a finger is a big deal. This may end his bass playing career prematurely. It may upset his day-to-day -day life for a while, but I'm glad you're going to be okay, mate. And we wish you a speedy recovery. So while the old man was building TT racers and cutting off fingers, me and Thomas were busy building a number of motorcycles the other side of the shop. begins when we sold the BMW R45 in season two. We put it online, um, I had a phone call about it from a guy called Richard. He said, I'd love the bike, I'm gonna come down and have a look at it. Uh, he came down, had a look at it, fell in love with it, bought the bike. But the twist to the story is, he brought down a Ducati. It's a 1000cc Multistrada and the whole arse end of the bike had been cut off. So he'd angle grind the back of the frame off, taken all the bodywork off it, then decided 
oh, do you know what? I think I might be better off sending it to Mint Customs for the job to be done. He rolled it in the workshop and said, please, 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 can you help me out and get this bike up and running? I want to build like a, a calf racer type bike and you know, I want a funky paint job and I want it to be beautiful looking. I want it to be all black, really hard looking, but with like a green type, green paint job basically with red graphics. I stood there scratching my head and ended up saying, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll take on the project, but it's gonna take a while because we're, we're super busy and the race season's starting. This 2003 Ducati Multistrada started out life looking something like this. Yes, you could argue this is one of the most ugliest bikes Ducati have ever made. This is like, uh, what's that movie? But once all the bodywork is removed, the chassis and engine setup looks flipping awesome. Brembo brakes, Marcassini wheels, single-sided swing arm, a big 1000cc V-twin. This bike ticks a lot of boxes. So we got it on the bench and the first job was to figure out how we were going to build the subframe. He wanted a triple nine Ducati fuel tank fit into it. So we come up with a design. We made up some tank brackets and rubber mounted the tank to the frame and then built a subframe off the back of it with a real nice tidy looking calf seat. Could run the tank further back, lower these. It gives us more clearance on the frame. Oh, that is a hundred times better. So Tom, what, what stuff have you been doing on the Ducati? Talk, tell us, tell us some, something. <laughs> well, me and Sam wanted to get it done, I think, because we're on, kind of, well, we're always on a time scale. So we're like, you know, let's do it, let's get it done. So Sam gave me the, uh, the task of the battery box, sorting out the wiring, a load of other brackets and mounts and basically a bit of framework and everything but the subframe basically. Yeah. The biggest problem with the whole build was the seat did not meet the tank and it was just ugly. Like the subframe was beautiful, the seat was beautiful, the tank looked beautiful, but it didn't quite go together properly. There's no flow, exactly Tom, no flow. Me and Tom sat one night well, you did, Tom, didn't you, really? Went through YouTube and learned the best he could on YouTube about how to fiberglass. We got to the workshop the next day and gave fiberglass in a go. Date. Um, the subframe's done apart from this, I need to put a loop in here, which Hot Rod Tom is making us at the moment. But then once the hoops welded in, uh, the bike could be stripped and then we could overworld all of the frame and get the frame finished and sent for powder coat. And as Hot Rod Tom is around today, we've dragged him in to help us out with the exhaust system. He specialises in Hot Rod exhaust systems, so I'm sure this Ducati won't be a problem. So we come up with a design for the exhaust and we got Hot Rod Tom to make up a link pipe and TIG weld it all together. We didn't want it hiding the rear wheel because it's a single sided swing arm with a beautiful Marcassini rear wheel. Everything's starting to come together nicely. The exhausts are almost done. All the little brackets for the coils and we made a battery box. We've moved the battery from the side of the bike under the tank. Then we've rubber mounted the 999 Ducati tank to this Multistrada bike fitted a calf seat and then to join the calf seat and the tank we're going to attempt to fiberglass and we're going to make a fiberglass panel that joins the tank and the seat together but neither of us have ever fiberglassed before get over there being resin on something first the towel right well, it's going to get very messy I'm 
gonna wrap it the whole thing up. Great idea, mate. Star Wars moment, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, bro. It's looking good, mate. I was a little bit surprised, but it came out really good. It was strong, it did the job, it took the weight of a human, which I was really worried about, it taking the weight of a human. So we've mounted the oil tank just about to finish the subframe and the exhaust. Trying to get this bike done as soon as possible and get it sent for paint and powder coat. This tank isn't designed for the bike, as you know. It's a 999 tank. So we've sent off all the little brackets we made underneath powder coat, we're gonna get our paint specialist Otto to filler all this and make it look pretty. We're modifying the fork so the front end sits nice. Black powder coated yokes. And a battery box. We've refreshed the engine, serviced the engine, new belts, spark plugs, the full works on the engine. The frames come back from powder coat, the swing arm's gone in, the shock's been rebuilt. Get him. It. Done. We are on a budget with this build. There's a lot of little things we would like to do that simply won't be in the budget, but I truly think it's gonna turn out like a really nice looking motorcycle. make a cup of tea. I think so. Okay, so today is Tuesday and this Monday is the bike show. Yes, you heard me right. It's going to a bike show and not only is it going to a bike show, it's going to be revealed for the very first time to its owner. We're still waiting on the oil hoses. All the bodywork's gone back to Otto to be polished. We haven't even run the engine yet. No road test. No MOT yet. I'm a little bit stressed out. Oh, Carolina, the days were counting down and the show was creeping up on us. The bodywork came back and was fitted for the last time. The new oil hoses were fitted and the engine was tested. Oh, mama. Just time for an MOT and a road test and we're ready to go. Welcome to the Wheels on Warmer Green. This is a small local show, perfect for showing off some of our latest builds. I was nervous about handing over the multi strider I was worried about Richard not liking the colour scheme. The green was loud and in your face. But it turned out he absolutely loved it. In fact, he was blown away by how much we transformed the bike and how much we managed to squeeze into the budget. Another job in the books. We 
before we even finished this build, we had orders coming in for another two Ducatis. One with a similar budget and one with a much, much larger budget. 2019 is turning into one crazy year for the Parry Brothers and Mint Customs. Fast, it's loud. Bright fucking green. <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. What do you want to know? Well, first of all, we need to know about your finger. It's, it's, uh, it's alright. It's healing really well. Thanks everybody for the kind messages and stuff. Broken one's working. And that's just got the, the end bit missing. But, um... So I found out I can't click like that, and I, I can't flick my fag. <laughs> two things so far, without not being able to play my bass yet, but um. Air click. Let's do this. Let's do it. Uh, safety glasses. Welcome back to Mink Customs the series. This is episode three, the story of the NCR Ducati. Do I look like I've been eating donuts for the last six months every day? <laughs> been, hard, been hard at work, yeah. We have all been hard at work, and this 2003 Ducati 900 SS is next on our list. Oi boys, Hello. back to work. Okay. Okay, man. Cheers, man. Really good customer of mine, Nick Rhodes. Uh, a few years ago, I, well, I built a couple of bikes, but a few years ago, I built a 996 SPS Ducati in the Frankie Keeley NCR colours. He approached us a little while ago after one of the other builds that we'd done, um, but had sold. And so I said, oh, we'll just, we'll build you a bike. What do you want? And he said, just a calf racer, free rein, do whatever I like to it, not a problem. So I went for it, designed the bike, got the donor bike in, cut the back end of the bike off, started to get a bit too much for me with the other stuff that I had on the go as well. So I thought I'd give the build over to the boys. So the bike went into the boys shop, sat down with them, told them exactly what I wanted, showed them my pictures. And the idea behind it was to build a calf race version of his superbike. So like when he opened his garage door, he'd have the calf racer version and the superbike version, both in the NCR colours. And so it went over to them. And the design brief was pretty straightforward. But I had specific things in mind. And I said to them, don't muck it up. Okay, okay, Dad, don't worry. We'll do a good job. I promise. I've got the bike on the bench to have a close look at it because from the outside, just looking at it, it looked really rough. I don't think the bike had been cleaned for about, well, since it was new. But as we dug into the bike, we, we did actually realise it's, it's a good bike, it's just filthy, dirty. Little things that were worrying, like the exhaust studs were rotten, so we were worried about getting those out of the motor. The clutches. The clutch is completely ruined. The whole engine needs fully servicing. It needs a crazy amount of hours of work to try and make it look new again. There's a lot of other little things we were worried about, but it was the perfect donor bike. It was exactly what we needed. I'm making some little support mount brackets for the swing arm. It looks trick as hell. Yeah, that does look trick, mate. Yeah, man. It's gonna look cool. Thank you. Oh, I can't wait for the day we get to ride this thing. It just seems so far away at this point. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Sammy P. <laughs> <laughs> 
keeps going on. It's not often we have to get the hammers out, but this bike is seriously rotten. So we've had to get the hammers out. <laughs> <laughs> we need these pipes, we can't afford new ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the exhaust pipe was one with the cylinder, front head. cylinder head. New exhaust system and a new cylinder head done, possibly. <laughs> Worst case scenario. Yeah, I think so. Best case scenario, we save this, the this, cylinder head. The rest of this exhaust pipe falls out of the cylinder head. And it looks all nice and lovely and we get these bolts out with no issues at all. And then buy a new exhaust system. And then they new pipe. This part of the exhaust pipe is stuck in the cylinder head. Sam's counting out now. Election, Yeah, boy. We have a few more small battles to win on this project, but the welding of fabrication on the subframe and swing arm is complete. We don't just have this project on the go. We have five workbenches. Something is happening in there and all of them have a long-term full rebuild on them. The old man and Lee, the engine carrier, have a couple of Harleys on the go. Me and Tomus have a Harley, another Ducati, and how could I forget the KTM 300 two-stroke project? That's waiting for me to save up some money. I need to buy an engine. Holy crap, looks insane. This Ducati 900 SS is being stripped and the frame is being sent for powder coat. The engine is gonna be soda blasted and rebuilt but today, we're rebuilding the suspension and Tomus is rebuilding the Brembo brakes. We're getting hot water. It was really nice having the old man designing the bike, so all we had to focus on was making everything perfect, the fabricating work, we designed the subframe. Uh, he was looking after the colour scheme, he was looking after the paint job, he was looking after the overall design of the bike. We just had to make sure the motor was sound, it had a new clutch, it had new everything on the motor, new belts, you name it, everything was new. And as we were getting a number of orders coming in for full rebuilds, the most complicated thing about building this bike was we were building four other bikes at the same time. It's been a pretty stressful few weeks, but it's all coming together really nicely. Everything came back from the powder coaters and the engine was ready. We picked the engine and the frame up and placed it gently onto the bench. The wheels went back together, freshly powder coated, new discs, new tyres, new bearings. The calipers were rebuilt and refitted. The new exhaust system was fitted and the end cans, specially made by Posh and Thomas. <laughs> we went with the fattest rear tyre we could get into this swing arm. Oh mama. In the middle of all this work going on, we had a small open day for friends and family. Thank you to everyone that came along. The paintwork arrived just in time for the open day. The 
old man had a close eye on what we were getting up to. I really hope we don't let him down. He's a good customer. It's got to be exactly how I would build it for him. So therefore the job went to them. I was pretty Hawkeye over what they were doing, but man, they pulled it out of the bag. It looks absolutely amazing. And when he walked in and first saw it, he, he couldn't speak. It was, it, it was a good bike. Turned out really, really well. Rode really well. And he's very happy, so that's the main thing. I think we all rode that as well. We, we all rode it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a cracking little bike. Oh, it's beautiful. It was fast. I only did 30 miles an hour. <laughs> so after six weeks, 200 hours of labor, this Ducati 900 SS project is complete and ready for multiple road tests. <laughs> it's just little things like when you sit on a bike that's well made you just have that feeling like everything feels right the throttle feels right the clutch feels good the brakes feel tight everything's working as it should it sounded nice one problem like every bike we build we have to give them away after we've done it why can't we just keep all of them Tom I wish we weren't poor so we could just keep more bikes <laughs> It's a very special day at the shop for two reasons. Yes, we are building two Harley Davidsons. And when I say we, I mean the old man is building one, and so is Tomus. But Tom doesn't know it yet. I got the cock the devil in my left hand. I got the balls of the load in my right hand in my They are both running five-speed 1200 Sportster engines. Both the frames have had hardtail conversions done in-house by the old man and Hot Rod Tom. It's like a Harley build-off. We've just got to tell Tom. Once upon a time, I built um, a frame. I, just, I was just building a frame. I was building a frame. I was building a frame for me. Everything's going well, it's going well. Bottled it all up basically for a stock rear wheel. But then I found a 250 rear, quite a fat rear wheel. And I thought, oh, actually, I'm going to use that. I'm going to base this frame around this rear wheel. Of course, when I went to offer it into the frame that I'd just built, it wasn't quite right. There was a little bit of clearance issues. There was this, that, and the other. And I, effectively, I needed quite a wider frame. So I thought I didn't know what to do with, with this frame I've just built. It's, cracking frame built an oil tank for it everything it's it looks really really good but i couldn't use it for this wheel and the whole of this new build that i wanted to build was all about this back wheel now so i had a surplus frame well over the last few weeks tom moose has been harping on about building a harley I want to build a harley and i keep catching him in here sitting on the harleys like sam was with the decays I want to build a Harley, I want to build a Harley. Why can't we build a Harley? And the last three or four bikes they've been doing have been um, Ducatis and whatever. So I thought, I've got an idea. I've got another front end, got another rear wheel, basically got a whole rolling chassis. So the end to this part of this story is, I've given that chassis to Tom to build a Harley. I think we should go and tell Tom now, don't you? 
We haven't told Tom yet. But this is between me and Sam at the moment. What do I do with it? What do I do with it? Give it to Tom. I got the apple off a snake in a fish fight and there ain't nothing that I don't... We will tell Tom he's building a Harley in the next episode. Today it's time to put the motor in the new, wider frame conversion. There's still a lot of welding and parts to be fitted before this bike could be sent for paint and powder coat. And we haven't named it. We need to name this thing. I got the dagger, the jagger, put the boat we I got Alaska to be that snow we I've been a while all down with the It was a busy few days, but we managed to get the bike finished and sent for paint and powder coat. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> oh, that's skills. <laughs> Today is a special day. Fresh. All the parts for the old man's unnamed Harley project are back from powder coat. <laughs> and we get to see what the rolling chassis is gonna look like. Dad's been dad's been busy building the chop, whilst also renovating the workshop. We've been calling this bike the Cheesy Chop, but it needs a real name. Let's see what this thing's all about. So Dad, what are you gonna name this thing? Can't we ask people? Can't yeah. we ask people to name it? Uh, yeah, ask, ask, see what people can come up with a name for it. It has a custom made mint custom seat. 21 inch front wheel with a white wall tire, oversized rear wheel with a white wall tire, the classic white Mint Customs hardtail frame, which is the old man's signature colour. If you have any ideas of a name for this bike, please comment below. Oh, we tried something out, well, for the first time with the Cheesy Chop. We've had the, um, we had the engine soda blasted and I sent it to a company that said that they could do this ceramic coating on the, on the whole engine. There'd be loads of little things you come across that you need the end of your finger for, aren't there? Yeah. Oh, I'm sick to my stomach and I'm staying in bed. So I sent the engine off for the ceramic coating and it came back. It's uh, and then all, what was left to do with the engine when it came back was to actually detail it, change all the bolts for stainless bolts and, and dress it. Cheesy chops a go! You weren't happy with the original set of pipes, were you? No, the, set, the first set of pipes, they look ish. They look bad and it sounded good, but it just, did, it just didn't look right. So, quick text to Hot Rod Tom. I said, you fancy a late night and building a set of shotguns on the cheesy chop? And as always, he's like, yeah, all right. <laughs> Alex, the uh, weatherman, supplied pizza, chips, coleslaw and Coke. There are other soft drinks available. And, uh, and just proceeded to annoy us for most of the evenings that Tom and I were trying to build this pipe. It was just... Take my strong hand. <laughs> really annoying. But, well, I mean, he's always really annoying. We love you really, Alex. The motor was in, the wiring was almost done. It was getting close to the best bit, the road test. The paint job is a dark metallic gray. Thanks, Otto. Hot Rod Tom and the old man's shotgun exhaust system, handmade oil tank, and hardtail frame design. But, but handles, she handles. I've never ridden a hardtail chop that actually does handle we went out the other night and did some right twisty roads and i was off the edge of the tire it, it, and it just it stayed there the odd bump weren't too good but uh i 
think it's fair to say this Harley Davidson is rather special. This project took six weeks. There was a few late nights and a special thank you to the whole Mint Customs crew for their hard work. Now I'm sick to my stomach and I'm staying in bed. The weight of your tears keeps pounding my head. It's not that we're broken, but something's not right. I need to tell you. to tell you tonight I got the <laughs> As you may already know, Thomas, or we like to call him Moose for short, is my little brother, the second of the Parry brothers. He is now taller, stronger and smarter than me, but I know something that he doesn't. Moose has been working at the shop for over a year now and he's been a part of every project that has left the building. And he's even taken on his own full rebuilds like the 125 project. It's quite clear my little brother is learning fast and he's developing new skills every day and he has what it takes to build awesome motorcycles. I wonder if he's up for a new challenge. So Tom, Yo. when are you going to build a Harley? One day. Me and the old man we're hatching a plan. Are we going to get Tom to build the Harley and then give the Harley to him? Or should we just give him the whole of the rolling chassis so he can build his whole Harley Davidson for himself? Yeah, I think we should just get the rolling chassis built up and then give it to him. And say, do what you want with it. I would do that. Moose has been wanting to build a Harley for months. He shares the same obsession with Harley's as the old man. I think it's time to break the news to him. So, what's the plan? What's the, what colour? What? Who's it for? What am I doing to it? Okay, we've got we've got free reign on the design. We've got yeah. free reign on the colour. See Sweet. whether we're running whatever mud guards. Whatever, whatever, we've got free reign on it. Okay. Who's it for? It's for you, Tom. With the old man donating a frame to the cause, Moose is well on his way to completing the Harley project. Finally, I get to do a Harley. But reality sets in, and we still have to raise the money to finish this thing. So we got to work raising money, the only way we know how, building motorcycles. Bike after bike, we were making oil tanks, exhaust systems, swing arm conversions, service work, suspension rebuilds, and we put all the money into a pot and we didn't spend a penny of it, apart from the odd lunch. What you got there, bro? Um, curry, no one bread. Nice. It is, it is one <laughs> We even found time for some alley welding lessons with John the welder. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Really appreciate your time. Not only did we raise enough money to build this Harley Davidson, we also raised enough money to build a dream Ducati. 
which is going to be in the next episode. Something's arrived today. It's a 1200 Sportster Harley Davidson. And Tom may have just bought it. Now we have raised the money and bought all the parts we needed to finish this project. It's time for some late nights to finish all the fab work, like making the battery box. You made yourself a little battery box. Yeah, the battery sits in there and then the off and on. Yeah, got the ignition and that and that side. Wheel spacers, building the front end. Fuel tank mounts, mud guards, the list goes on. Mud guard and the fenders installed, yeah. We've got to get this frame sent for powder coat. The fuel tank, oil tank and mud guards sent for paint. You just fart. And the engine needs stripping, and all the covers need blasting and recoating. This Harley Davidson 1200 Sportster is going to be all black and chrome with a dark gunmetal grey paint job. Every day is a school day and we're always having fun. <laughs> Who needs fingers when you've got a moustache like that? Mm. <laughs> 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 you look f***ing awesome. <laughs> ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you're, only, you're only some hair shit away from joining me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll just lift this. <laughs> The wait for paint and powder coat begins. Luckily, there's some toys in the workshop to play with. What the hell is this? Someone wants an engine put in it, a proper engine. Drive it to Russia. Once we prepped the engine for paint and we sent the fuel tank, oil tank and mud guards or as Harley Davidson would like to call them fenders off for paint we had to get ready to go to a bike meet a few miles down the road. The old man and bike stop in Stevenage had organised the day out. And we brought a few of our own bikes down. Do you remember the TT racer? Midnight, the all-black Harley Davidson and Ruby Red. Stuart even brought down his early 70s TR750 Grand Prix bike. Oh, my.
don't think we'll be closing tonight at 5.30. I, really I, don't, don't. I don't think so either. But no, no I, so from the customer side of things or from the, the, the visitor side of things, it couldn't have been better. It has been brilliant and a nice steady flow and different bikes. Yeah, there's some a turnover the going amazing. on. amazing, yeah. yeah. I've actually yeah. videoed some of them coming and going, a Triton's just been and gone. Yeah, I saw that. We've had yeah. two RD 350s. So it's not just cafe races, but it's a bit of everything. It and really how is. It, how it should be. Exactly how it should be. But it's brilliant, been brilliant. You enjoyed it, Sam? <laughs> well done. So we just got to keep, yeah, do another one and keep we it We will, we'll do loads more. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Once though. a week. No, thank you, Martin. Mutual Admiration Club. Yeah, guys, thank you very cheers, much. Guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers, There were so many cool bikes that showed up. Thank you for everyone for popping by. It's been, it's been fairly straightforward, isn't it? No mm. real big drums. It's a Harley. <laughs> So the Moose project continues. Yes, Posh. Posh is here, everybody. The hardtail frame that the old man had made and donated to Moose has been powder coated. We got powder coats, huh? huh? We got powder coats. Sweet. You guys busy in here. <laughs> well, the plan from the start with the Harley was to keep it simple. So what's going on over here, mate? Nothing. Give it sort of dark features, so dark paintwork, dark frame, dark wheels, everything dark, and then I wanted the chrome to sort of pop on the bike. But I wanted it to look like it handles, and I wanted it to look like a bike everyone would like, not just certain people. So yeah, I kept with dark colours. So it looks mean. Nothing. wheels have been built up and the fresh tyres and bearings have been fitted. Lovely. From getting the frame back, it's taken what? Well, it's taken weeks because we wait for stuff, but in all working hours, how long has that taken to build? Yeah, it hasn't taken that long <laughs> to get to this stage. Wiring to do, finish. Got the engine to finish rebuilding. Cannot wait to ride it. I'm also scared about what riding it because I'm going to want to keep it even more, which I cannot do. <laughs> I cannot afford to keep it, so it's going up for sale. The fuel tank, the oil tank that Hot Rod Tom made, and the fenders are back from paint. It's time for Moose and the old man to start the wiring loom and ignition switch. Lee the engine carrier helps bleed up the brakes. Everything starts coming together. This is my favorite bit. Uh, timing issue. We'd lost the spark for a bit, but we found it. Yeah. So what do you reckon, Tom? Nothing. Well, You're a bit speechless. <laughs> yeah. It's done. So it's done apart from two things, right? Exhaust. Exhaust, they're got, just... Got to fit a speedo to it. That's in the post. So a speedo and a proper exhaust system, not this. The, these pipes we just use as a mock-up so we could run the engine while we're waiting for the actual pipes to show up. We built the hardtail Harley Davidson over a period of three months in between other projects. I'm very proud of my little brother and what he has achieved. Hopefully the next Harley he builds he can actually keep it. Now the new exhaust and the speedo is fitted, there's only one more thing left to do before we send this bike to auction. So we are ready for test riding, but it is so wet and it hasn't stopped raining for a whole week. 
Luckily, the day before we were taking the bike to auction along with two other bikes, the sun came out and it was game on. Drag racing is a head-to-head, -head, quarter mile, straight line, all out, sprint to the finish. The faster the better, and the winner takes all. It's a whole shot win. The sheer power and beauty of these machines is jaw-dropping, but this is professional racing, and we're a custom bike shop. We're not interested in rules or winning championships. We just want to build a fire-breathing monster with 200 horsepower, air shift, and a massive rear tire. With the help of some friends and a very good cause, we have done it. Well, when I say we, I mean my dad, Simon. He has built the bike from the ground up and there's only one more thing left to do before we auction it off for charity. And we have all decided that my dad should ride it. <laughs> it's race day, race fans. Welcome to Santa Pod Raceway. We have some very special guests with us this weekend. The boys at Mint Customs have built their very own drag racing machine, and they are here to test it for the very first time. We have Sam Perry in the commentary box with us. Sam, can you tell us more about this project? Hey man, for the last two months we have been building this bike. Everyone is here today to see this bike in action. A huge shout out to all of our sponsors. After this event, the bike is going to be auctioned off and all the money is going to Noah's Ark Children's Hospice. We are all hoping it will raise a lot of money at auction and we are also hoping the rain is going to hold off so we can see this bike in action. It is not looking good at all. The boys are going to be absolutely gutted. Okay, the organizers have officially canceled the meeting. We live to fight another day. We will, yeah. Next weekend. Absolutely. 29th is the next one. Let's do it. Yeah, we'll do it, yeah. We'll do it. And I got right in the zone as well. Got right in the zone. Chapters. Better luck next time, Mint Customs. I was absolutely gutted that that we couldn't get out but I did have another week to do a couple of little tweaks on the bike a couple of tweaks with the air shift we are back and ready to race rolled down for the first run and the guy at the front waved me through and said do you want to go out on your own Simon at mid customs rolls up to the starting line so I, I lined up I did my burnout the bike was completely untested. I've never launched it. We hadn't done more than 20 mile an hour on it. I think the English phrase is, he's bricking it. Is that right, Sam? <laughs> yeah, he's definitely bricking it. Serves him right for building a drag bike. He has learned the Prime Minister's name just in case they ask him in the hospital. Rolled into stage, watched from my stage lights. I had my thumb hovering over the, the button and the clutch and absolutely pinned it. Let's go, go, go! At which point, the bike went sideways. <laughs> Got 
got it back into the, the pits, I was kind of okay and a bit apprehensive about doing the next run. I thought I'm definitely on for a 10 something. I need to get a 10, I need to get a 10 second something, something. The times didn't get much better until the fifth run. My dad's lining up for another run. He told me he really wants a 10 second time, but he's running out of daylight. <laughs> set by the mint boys and the fifth run I managed an 11 0 0 8 130 mile an hour as it, as it was we'd built it with a stock R1 engine in it so I couldn't ask any more out of the bike the bike was excellent chassis at the end I knew exactly how to ride it so even with fighting it where it was I was more than happy uh, with with the bike the bike is Phenomenal. Um, I've got the 11, haven't I? No, still a little bit. So close. Great day. Couldn't have had a better day. The people around us, the support we had from one facility, the support we had from Drainworks, HM Quick Shifter, uh, everybody that was there, everybody was there. Had a really, really good day. It was an excellent day out. Weather was brilliant. Can't fault it. One of the best days I've had racing motorbikes this year. Only this year? next uh, well we've got the builds that are on the go at the moment to do but secretly there might be something in the mix the faster drag bike yeah do you remember the green Ducati Multi Strada we built a little while ago for a customer. We decided we were going to build another one. This is going to be the Mark II version and all of the little things that we didn't get to do in the green one, we're going to do in this one. We basically need to go out and find a donor that's going to suit exactly what we need to do. No, don't worry YouTube, that's Posh's project, not our donor bike. We'll ask him about that later. We found this, oh yes, by far the ugliest bike Ducati has ever made. A 2005 Ducati 1000 DS Multistrada. This bike has done less than 10,000 miles and it has all the goodies on it already. Thanks eBay. We won't be using the tank, all the bodywork, the bars, the yokes, the exhaust system. All that stuff can go straight back on eBay and raise some cash for new parts. For starters, the suspension, we're 100% going to be putting Olins in this bike. The biggest challenge with the Ducati was probably designing the frame because it's a completely different design to what we've done on the last Multistrada. If you remember on the last one, we braced the subframe from the bottom. This one, we want to brace the subframe from the top. <laughs> Whoa. It was actually Sam's idea of how he wanted the frame to be. He just kind of said, oh, you know, you, you, you make it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I want it to be like that, like this, look like that. I want the seat to be higher. I want the shock on show. I want the exhaust on show so you can see it all. Um, Tom, make it happen. <laughs> so yeah, he's like, right, this is how it needs to be. Just do it. The, we're going to use a different style tank. We're going to use a 1098 fuel tank. Uh, a Ducati Imola seat unit, which we're going to customise for ourselves. So noisy in here, isn't it? Yeah, it is a bit. It's hot and noisy, mate. <laughs> What have we done? 
Yeah, what have we done? Yeah, what have we done? When I was three, Dad every week used to buy um, the Auto Trader magazine, and in the back of that magazine were some green pages, and those green pages were all motorbikes. So I okay. used to sit going through it, going, "Dad, is that a PW50? No. Dad, is that a PW50? No. Dad, is that?" And then every now and again, one of them would be a PW50, but it was always way too expensive. What what is this fetish with PW50s? Because that's the only bike I was small enough to ride. I was, that was small enough for me to ride. Yeah. Oh, right. So you were looking for your bike. So yeah, yeah I was right. only I was three, and the only bike I could actually ride was a PW50. By the time I was four, he, a friend of a friend of a friend was selling an Italia Jet 50. Needed a full rebuild. Needed work. It didn't run or anything. We were like, we'll have it. It was like 50 quid or something, 40 pound or something. Yeah. And it was bright green with like purple, blue and purple feathers going over the fuel tank. It was all metal, metal mud guards, metal tank, twin shock, proper old school. Got a photo of it? I have somewhere, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, photo does exist. Proper old school. And it needed a full rebuild. And we called it Bob. Because <laughs> you went, Bob, Bob. <laughs> and every Sunday, from like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. It was just Bob. Story time is over. Let's get back to business. Sorry. I said be busy, not look busy. Oh, I've kind of, it's all in place and ready to go. All right. Unless I just. We also want to do an underseat exhaust system, have an upgraded clutch. Uh, we want the yokes to be made and we'll have our logo um, etched into the top of the yoke. We're gonna make the footrests. They don't make footrests for this bike, so we're gonna have to make some footrests. Because on the last one, the footrests were quite low. We wanna lift the footrests and give it more of a race position. Marcassini wheels, Brembo brakes, all of the goodies. We give it a good go, didn't we? Yeah, we did it. <laughs> yeah, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. A lot of late nights and stuff. Yeah. Like even down to the battery tray. Yeah. Redesigning it all. And it's getting everything that was on the original bike, like the wiring and like the battery and all that, out of view. Yeah, and we're worried about the heat of the exhaust for the seat. Yeah, we were really worried about the exhaust cooking the seat unit. Um, but it doesn't, it seems to be fine. We've run the bike up a couple of times now, put it through some heat cycles and all seems good. It took us so long to design the subframe and all the other little parts on this bike. Time was not on our side. We did the late night to get the bike ready for paint and powder coat. High five. The bike was stripped to the bare frame and all the welding and grinding was finished. Tomus started on the motor prepping it for soda blasting. And by the early hours of the morning we had it all sent for paint and powder coat. Boys, take your hat off. What the hell is going on there? <laughs> it's a process! <laughs> it's a process! <laughs> <laughs> the real slim, real slim the shady. shady let go. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! We all know Posh. Sneaky. The main man. Sneaky So, what projects are you working on at the moment, Posh? What am I working on or what I have been working on? I'm working on Dotty. No, Dotty isn't a TT race winner or a fully customised motorcycle, but it is Posh's love. Well, I, I rode her home for the first time and, and completely fell in love with her. Yeah, she's been street fighted, um, a bit rough around the edges. Posh isn't just a pretty face around the shop. He's helped us design and build a number of bikes too. 
I, I gave her to uh, a mate of mine who had stored her for like three odd years. Yeah, and then after talking to you and the old man, and I phoned him back up and had a chat, and he said, she's always your bike. So just come and get her, mate, she's yours. So I got her back. I'm not sure if that was the right choice. <laughs> 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 yeah, bad, bad, bad. Posh rarely is on camera and doesn't get enough credit for all of his hard work. The same goes for Lee, Alex, and of course, Hot Rod Tom, who is helping us design the exhaust system on this latest Ducati build. I reckon you should do your beard the same. <laughs> Bleach your beard. <laughs> the frame is back from powder coat. And the colour scheme, the colour scheme is going to be red frame and silver and grey bodywork. Oh look, look, just like that, it's already happened. Delegation. <laughs> Delegation is get everyone else to cut your wheel spacers and your bracket spacers and stuff for you because he's injured. <laughs> <laughs> We built the wheels up and the Olean suspension has been rebuilt and modified for the new chassis setup. Moose was finishing the brakes and we dropped the frame and front end onto the engine. Final assembly is my favourite bit. Roll on the day we get to ride this thing because I cannot wait. Heartbreak on the line, I couldn't make I'm stopping time. Apart from the wiring room and the paint looking really good, really done. Yeah. We we desperately need to sell this bike because oh, no. we are poor. Yeah. And we've spent all of our money on my bikes. So this as soon as this bike's done, we've got to sell it. So if anyone <laughs> watching wants to buy a DK, <laughs> it's almost ready. <laughs> She could see him, but she could <laughs> not a hug. What do you have on your chin, Tom? He died, calling out my love. Fair enough. Today is all about finishing the wiring loom and bringing this bike to life. The paintwork is done and on its way to the workshop as we speak. Stay. We are also hoping the top yoke is going to be finished and we can get this bike outside for a photo shoot in its first road test. Okay, so we, we got to a point where the bike was ready to start. We're like, all right, let's, let's, let's start the bike. So we go to turn the bike over and it just goes Vroom. This thing wouldn't start and it, would, it wouldn't even turn over, would it? No. And we thought, right, it must be the battery because it was, it was dead. It, it felt it's dead. It's trying it to start. Dead. So we got a new battery, we fit the new battery, still doing the same thing. Put the battery on charge, we charged it overnight, come back the next day, and it still wouldn't start. So we were like, hmm, okay. The charger keeps telling us that these batteries are fully charged. So we thought, right, the battery's got a full charge. It must be something else. It must be something else. So we started stripping the loom out. Taking everything apart, doing loads of earth. everything. We're thinking it was a bad earth. Think, We're thinking yeah. all these things, <clears throat> or a split in a cable somewhere, or the, the uh, CDI is not working properly, or the starter solenoid. We've gone through everything. It's nothing else. We've gone over there and picked up a bigger, better battery that we've got. It's a 12 volt uh, forklift battery. Yeah, 12 volts, but it's got a shitload of amps in it. Shitload of amps, and connected that up. Blah, blah, blah. fired straight away. At that point we thought it must be the charger, it must be the battery charger, because it wasn't working. So, um, Sam in a mad strop picks up the battery charger and um, destroys it. <laughs> it <can cut> <laughs> <laughs> Driving over it and shit. He's gonna 
<laughs> what? It didn't even break! <laughs> hey! It worked for a little while, didn't it? A couple months. Yeah, it, uh, we, we used it on the 125, we used it on the 250 build. Seem, seemed to do the right job, but it kept telling us they were fully charged, and obviously they're not. So something in here has gone wrong. Well, it has now, anyway. Oh, I see the problem. No, I don't. <laughs> Oh yeah, look, that's broken. It's been run over, that's why it's not working. <laughs> Who the hell done that? <laughs> Turns out it weren't the battery charger, it was the battery. <laughs> so we had to buy a new battery charger. <laughs> um, there's a word for that, isn't there? Yeah. Can we use that word? <laughs> not in Canada. <laughs> 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 yeah. So yeah, we bought a really good Fandango battery charger that, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, that we didn't need. Didn't need it, but it's amazing. At all. It's really good though, isn't it? Yeah. Really good. I'll be on the trigger, I'll be on the run Make my body shiver, I'm so sick with love When all is said and done You're the one, you're the one, you're the one, you're the one One, you're the one, you're the one, you're the one This Ducati 1000 DS Custom took me and my little brother eight weeks to complete. A complex frame design, a few late nights, two faulty batteries later, and we have built the nicest, most expensive bike we have ever done. It makes us wonder where do we go from here? We got a new cameraman. If you have any ideas for our YouTube channel, please comment below. Now you've rode the Ducati, how's it feel? Wow. It's fast, it's, it, it's light, the brakes are amazing, it handles beautifully. We, we did, um, the first time I rode it, it felt a little bit on the front, like a little bit too much weight was on the front. So me and Tom got the bike back here. Uh, we lifted the forks in the yokes and lowered the ride height a little bit and moved some of the weight towards the back of the bike went back out on it and it's beautiful it's amazing and it's so fast it sounds like a moto gp bike Nobody. it is sick i am so gutted we've got to sell this bike So it, we want this bike to go to we want this bike to go to a really good home. If you're interested in buying it, then drop us a message and we'll let you know how much it is and we'll give you all the details for it. <laughs> or not, just don't bother, no one turn up. I don't mind not eating.
So this is the end of season three and we'd like to thank you for watching and please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have plenty of other ideas, video ideas. Click the little bell thing because that lets you know when we upload a video. Uh, we want to on, go on some adventures and do some cool stuff so please subscribe, that'll be awesome. You can go to our website as well and buy a t-shirt if you're interested. See you maybe in the next maybe season, maybe, if we do the next one, if we can, maybe. See you then, bye. Say hi, Lottie. Lottie. Say bye. Say bye. Bye. Hey. What are you doing? <laughs> Got itch. <laughs> Hold on, let me just get this. Ah. But you don't understand I won't be here when You wake up again